Hello, my name is Spiro Antonopoulos, and I'm part of the executive team at Kuvacash. I've been working closely with our developers over the last several months to hone our requirements, and now I want to walk you through a few of our core services and areas of functionality. We aim to pilot Kuvacash with real users on the ground in Zimbabwe this coming September, offering three key services to start. One, cheap and fast inbound remittances to charge the ecosystem with Dash. Two, the Kuvacash wallet, which supports multiple modes of peer-to-peer -peer payments, as well as instant transfers between Dash and USD. And three, local USD cash out, enabling users to book physical USD directly from their Kuvacash wallet. These three services are critical for us to gain trust, to educate people on the inherent value of Dash, and to charge the system with transaction flow. According to the World Bank, since 2010, the annual total of inbound remittances to Zimbabwe has ranged between 1.2 and 2.1 billion USD. But current options are expensive. They charge up to 12%, leaving some Zimbabwe expats to prefer networks of couriers, friends, and family to transport funds across borders. Kuvacash aims to capture market share of inbound remittances by providing this service at ultra-low rates, as low as 4%, 3%, or even less. To give a sense of the magnitude of this opportunity, consider this. By capturing even 2% of this remittance market, we will direct up to $20 million of funds annually into the Kuvacash Dash ecosystem in Zimbabwe. Now let's have a look at how it works. Now we will walk you through inbound remittances. And as you can see, this is a web portal. And I am already logged in because I'm a user that has sent inbound remittances before. So I've done my onboarding and I've done my KYC and I've been approved as a user. So what I need to do now is select a currency. At the moment, we have two currencies, two send currencies available. And let's say I'm in Germany and I wanna send 100 euros. The fee to send 100 euros is automatically calculated in the cost to send field. And for anybody that has sent money abroad, they will immediately recognize that this is a very low fee uh, at only um, less than 4%. I'm going to enter my uh, recipient information. Now I have to enter a valid Zimbabwe phone number for it to be accepted and for me to proceed. The reason for this is that we are, upon receipt of the funds from the sender, we are sending an SMS to the recipient in Zimbabwe with a payment reference number. Now that recipient can take that reference number with their personal identification details and pick up physical USD at the Kuva Cash agent store or in the future with mobile agents. If they already have a Kuva Cash wallet, they will receive a URL that will take them to the app and allow them to put their funds in their wallet as Dash. So I'm gonna to agree to terms and conditions. Uh, first, I'm gonna enter a payment reason. And we do this in order to, for audit purposes, but also for our own personal reporting. We agree to the terms and conditions of the sale. We select next. We have the transaction summary here. Oh, if we want to do something else, say we want to send more money, we can go back and the details are still there. Well, let's continue with this transaction. Let's select next. And now I have completed my registration and I am instructed to send a certain amount to specific banking details via internet banking with a specific payment reference number. And this payment reference number is how we will associate uh, the reference to the specific uh, recipient. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we'll have a manual process if users forget to answer this, uh, enter this reference number along with their transaction. If a user is happy with this, they will select confirm and then a timer will start, uh, which effectively uh, locks in their transaction for a certain amount of time. In reality, this will be less. Um, and also I wanna point out the fact that these are our beta screens, which are up and running now, but we're going through a refactoring process at the moment. Uh, we will have newly designed screens that will also have some additional information, uh, including uh, the amount that the user on the other side will receive. And so a user will be able to select either fix either the send amount or the receive amount. 
Um, a lot of people who are familiar with remittances will know that this is a pain point, um, saying I want to send a certain amount and the recipient actually receiving a different amount on the other end. So I can now, uh, if I've done my internet banking in another browser, I can go into my transactions. I can see my remittances that are pending. Uh, these uh, are testing statuses that won't be uh, visible in production, of course. I can open up a specific transaction and I can look at the details to confirm. I can also go to my historical transactions, select view, and also see the history. When the transaction was created, when the registration was completed, when the money was received by Kuva Cash, and then completed when the user on the other end picked up the funds or put the funds in their wallet. And we will show you how that works in a second. So now we'll show the inbound remittance flow from the perspective of the agent. I'm still logged in as the sender in Germany, and I have just completed some transactions and I can view all my transactions and a couple of them are pending. So let's say uh, the recipient wants to go and cash out in Zimbabwe. Now we're gonna copy the payment reference number because that's what the recipient will take to the Kuva Cash agent in Zimbabwe. And now let's switch screens and let's log in as an agent. Now the agent will see all the recent transactions the reference number is not visible to the agent. This is an added layer of security. The individual will come in with the reference number. The agent will enter it, will find it, will confirm the recipient's name against his or her personal identification documents, um, will um, confirm the amount, will enter the payment reference number, and if it's uh, accurate and if it uh, lines up with the recipient with the amount and with the SMS number that's in the back end this button will be enabled and only then will the agent be able to give physical cash to the recipient so if I say select complete cash out and confirm then it will show that the status of that reference number if I look for it again has been changed to completed and of course this is running um, reconciling in our back end so we know what cash has left the system. If I want to run a report. These reports aren't pretty yet, but just to show you some of what we've developed. We have all our transactions, full status, amounts, fees, and so forth. It's well known that access to basic financial services can serve not only as a bridge out of poverty, but as a means to accelerate prosperity. With Kuva Cash, virtually anyone can access these basic financial services, storing funds, transacting quickly, and accessing cash when needed. Dash is the ideal cryptocurrency for Zimbabwe because it's fast, it's cheap, and it has global value. In the next part of this video, we're going to demo the Kuva Cash wallet. From onboarding, to peer-to-peer -peer transactions with Dash, to transferring from Dash to USD. To start, we're going to demonstrate how to onboard as a new user.
So now we'll do a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. There are multiple modes in which people can send funds peer-to-peer. -peer. The one we're going to show you right now is sending funds to a contact that's in your address book. So we click send funds and next we're able to enter an amount. We are sending dash but we enter in USD and the spot rate between USD and Dash is instantly calculated and displayed below, as you can see. Next, we select the address book icon, and we select James. And because he is a registered Kuvacash wallet user, his name is automatically populated in there, and no further verification is required. We enter that we want to send funds to pay them back for the coffee. Click Next, Confirm, and the funds have been sent. And as you can see, the balance will be deducted right there. So now I'm going to request funds, and I'm going to request funds via a pay code. So I click Request Funds. I enter a requested amount and I remind the person that I'm requesting from what this is for. And then I select next. And as you can see here, a QR code is generated along with a pay code. The QR code is going to be useful when the two individuals are face-to-face, -face, whether it's two friends or a merchant transacting with a consumer. They'll be able to just scan and pay. But in this situation, for example, where I'm on the phone with James, I will instead ask him to pay to a pay code. So James, the pay code is 686865. Okay, that's for coffee. Okay, I'm sending that now. And okay. that's sent. And I have just received the receipt from James in the amount specified for coffee. And as you can see, my balance is already updated to reflect that new transaction. Now we will show you the third way that users can send or receive funds. This is scanning to a QR code. So let's assume you're a merchant and you have a good that you sell frequently. You might want to create a QR code through the request funds functionality and associate it with a price and print it out and stick it to your storefront. As a consumer, I would visit your store, I would see the item, I would press on my Kuva Cash app the scan and pay button in the lower left. It would display my QR reader. I would put it up to the code. It would read the QR and it would say, do you want to pay 12 cents? I would say, yes, I'm expecting to pay this for this loaf of bread. And I send those funds and I confirm. Transaction sends and broadcasts and confirms. And as you can see, my balance will be updating very quickly. There it is. And what we will now do is go to our Kuva Cash back office website, which you can see right here. We will log into our mobile users. And as you can see, there are a whole bunch of test users, but I'll go down and copy my Dash wallet address. I'll go to Dash Explorer and I will see the transaction that was just completed two minutes ago for 12 cents right here on Dash Blockchain Explorer. So now we're going to demonstrate transferring funds from your Dash balance to your USD balance. 
So why would a user want to do that? In order to book cash, a user will have to have a balance available in their USD ledger. So to do this, the user will just go to their thumb level menu, press transfer, and let's transfer 50 cents, which is an unrealistic amount. But for the purposes of this demo, it works. Then we press continue, and almost immediately, the transfer between the Dash balance and the USD balance has been made. And as you can see, the USD balance and the Dash balance have been updated. And these transactions can also be looked up on Dash Explorer. A huge share of Zimbabwe's economy is conducted in the so-called shadows, in other words, in the informal sector. And although there are multiple legal currencies in Zimbabwe, USD is far and away the king. Because of this reality, Kuva Cash is providing scheduled cash-out services so that the average user feels and connects with the inherent value of Dash on the ground. What's more, this cash-out service allows users without smartphones to participate in the inbound remittance flow discussed earlier. Now we will demo scheduled cash outs or booking cash. This is where a user can convert funds held in their Kuva Cash wallet as USD and their USD balance into physical cash. And they do this by selecting the book cash icon, entering an amount. This is an unrealistic amount, but let's just do that for argument's sake. Selecting next, and then the app will find their location and of course, there are no Kuva Cash agents in Massachusetts. So let's just go across the Atlantic and find Zimbabwe. And you see there is one agent right now. In the future, there will be multiple agents. They will be mobile. And a user will be able to see who is close to them that has cash available. They will select their preferred agent. They will be able to see available dates and available times, confirm, and then they will also be charged a transaction fee because we want to encourage people to keep their funds in their Kuva Cash wallet. If they want to cash out, this transaction fee is still far lower than the cost of obtaining physical USD in the market today in Zimbabwe. Confirm the cash out, and that will actually communicate with our Kuva Cash agent portal and backend and uh, show the agent uh, what float they have to maintain in order to be able to cash out these users and also communicate with their automated scheduler. This payment reference number is part of the user receipt. The user will have to present their personal identification details as well as this reference number to the agent before they can cash out. And as you can see, the balances have also been updated to reflect the cash out transaction. What we've shown you here is the core of what we will launch with. As you can see, this is much more than a wallet. It's an interlinked group of services that will redirect money already coming into Zimbabwe into Dash, a safer and more versatile store of value, but also into the wallet and services that Kuva Cash is providing, 
that will make Dash valuable and accessible to the average person on the ground in Zimbabwe. Finally, we want to tell you a bit about our merchant strategy and why we have invested a great deal of effort into partnerships in order to hypercharge adoption once we have launched. In an economy with 75% unemployment, millions of adults have innovated and turned to informal street trading, making money selling products like fruit, clothing, and auto parts in stalls by the road or in Harare's central business district. With the Kuva Cash wallet, any of these informal traders instantly become merchants accepting Dash. This functionality will be ready when we pilot, as we have demonstrated above. By the time of our full launch, we will roll out more sophisticated merchant services for larger merchants, which includes exchange risk management, USD settlement, and payment services to international suppliers. Beyond this, we know that to effectively drive mass adoption for Dash in Zimbabwe, we must also establish trust and credibility. This is why we focused our efforts on high-level partnerships within strategically important sectors such as transportation. In a previous update to the network, we discussed the transportation feasibility study being completed for the use of aerial cable cars in Harare. This study found that the transportation demand within Harare's central business district amounts to 30,000 plus trips per day. At 50 cents per trip, this is the equivalent of over $10 million annually. Kuvacash's contactless payment solution, powered by Dash, is included as part of this feasibility study, and we are currently working with city and government.